Welcome, fellow citizens of America, to our Diggy Round 2 report. Uh, my name is Sarah Greenhill. Uh, behind the camera is uh, Caleb Johnson. And to my left is a big, tall man named Ryan. As, you've, uh, as you will tell, uh, this is year five, round five of our Capital City. Uh, our sales is about $211 million, a little over, pretty well, um, considering that we gained millions of dollars over the past round. Uh, our net profit was around $30 million, which was an increase in the last round as well. And um, I think I'm going to let uh, Ryan take over to talk about our uh, closing cash position. All right, so uh, our closing cash position was $0. Uh, we had an emergency loan of $1.93 million. And uh, going down to the market share, we only had 3.9% of the Chinese market uh, in year five. But we had 22.3% of the USA market and 50% of the Germany market. Uh, I think this is largely due to the fact that we pulled out of the Chinese market. And obviously, if we pull out of it, we don't have any there. So. Uh, our stock price went up to the 79.38, and here's Caleb to talk about more stuff. Hello. So, as you can see, uh, our emergency loan is not a good thing. It's something that we were able to avoid in the past, but we made so many improvements in our production to hopefully help us finish out uh, the next couple of years well that it cost us more than we anticipated. We still issued some debt to be able to get in this situation, but um, it clearly did not work because we had so many plant improvements. On top of this, we also increased our marketing. It cost us a lot to re-enter the Chinese market, but we saw many companies pulling out of the Chinese market, so we needed to go back into the Chinese market so that we can fully uh, surround ourselves with the best possible chance to be the best possible company and make the most possible money. <coughs> hello, hello American citizens. Welcome to our uh, Captain Report for Big D Digby. Uh, this is our round six, year six report. A few things happened, um, negative, positive. I like to think on the positive side, sales. $280 million. It was about a $70 million increase, which is very nice. However, our net profit was not as much as last year. Last year was around $30 million. This year we're about $22 million, which is still a lot, but we're always looking to improve. Um, and so we hope that as next year comes around, uh, we can bump that back up. And uh, here's Ryan with the closing cash position. So, uh, as you can see, our closing cash position was about $92.5 million. Uh, this would be due to our financing department allowing us to take out more loans and stuff as to get a better score. <laughs> and uh, market share, as you can see, we re-entered the Chinese market. We're up to 23.4% there. Uh, we lost a little bit on the USA market and the Germany market. Uh, the Germany market was due to a new competitor coming in. And then our stock price went up to $102.32. Here's Caleb. So as you can see, our stock price jumped, which is really, really good, as we continue to uh, pay out dividend as well. But we also issued a ton of stock in this round. So we ended up having a huge closing cash position because we had so much stock that we issued out. This is hoping that we would make sure we did not have an emergency loan. Also hoping to uh, um, handle our stock price a little better so that it would go up, so that we could make more money in the future. And then we also, as Ryan mentioned, had a lot of loans that we issued. Uh, the main reason behind that was to have a better score in the game. But as far as our face-to-face -face board presentation goes right here, we did that because we wanted a large closing cast position so that the next round we could have even bigger plans as far as making our company better for the future. Uh, when we also look at 
our uh, different countries, we can see that we fell in Germany, and as Ryan said, that does have to do some with what the uh, competitor entered in, but we also didn't have as good of a hold on both high-tech and low-tech markets. Because of that, they were able to come in and take some of our contribution margin. So in the future, for the next year, we're gonna make sure that we attack that a little bit better, and um, since we already have really good awareness in the country of Germany, we're gonna make sure that we uh, go ahead and focus on both markets and be able to make more money in there. The huge positive thing in this is that our uh, market share in China jumped dramatically. It was in the almost 4% last round. That was nothing. But now that we've only been in there for one year, we've got it up to 23.4%. That's huge. And we'll be able to build on that in the future, and we're able to actually make money off of China now instead of going into debt, which is clear in our net profit and closing cash position. So this will help us in the future. Um, the biggest thing we did is to issue so much common stock, but we'll see in the next year how that plays into how much closing cash position we have and how much more money we can make because we'll be able to make more improvements. Welcome back to Digby's report. This is uh, round seven. Year seven. Um, as you can tell, our, um, our numbers went up. Um, as far as last round goes, we had sales of about 280 million. So we bumped ours up about 50 million dollars. We're at about 330. As far as our net profit bill, at round six we actually went down from round five. Quite a bit, and this year we actually jumped up a lot. We were at 22 million for our net profit. This year we we're at 42, so that's a 20 million increase. And as far as it goes, our numbers are doing nothing but up and improving in every position. And here comes Ryan with the closing cap position. Yes, so uh, as you can see, we have $110.6 million uh, closing cash on this year. Uh, that's an increase of about $26 million from the previous year. Uh, yeah, I mean, all due to our financing department stuff and uh, just issuing more loans and everything like that just to make sure we get a better score again. Uh, our Chinese market share went up again. Uh, USA and Germany dropped off very small percentages. But our stock price shot up, obviously, to $128.86. So here's a look more. So as we evaluate, we can see that China jumped. Our USA uh, market share went down, which is not good, but we still make a lot of money off of this. The cool thing, I think, in year seven that we see is that our closing cash position was great last round because we issued stock. This round, we actually bought all that stock back, and we paid off all of our debt. But we still had a closing cash position of $110 million. So that just shows what our marketing team is doing, as you can see in the sales, where our sales continue to skyrocket way above all the other competitors, 100 million over other competitors. So when we look at that, we can easily see um, the effectiveness of our marketing and how uh, the closing cast position has not been determined by um, our financing as far as putting in um, money as far as like issuing stock and issuing debt, but from our sales. Uh, we can also look about uh, our global contribution margin. So our global contribution margin started at 23.2%. So even though um, our market shares went down in some areas, our current uh, contribution margin is 28.2%. So, like I said, originally it was 23.2% before the round, now it is 28.2%. So even though we lost some market share as far as like in the US or Germany, um, it actually got better globally. So we actually have more possession of the globe's market share of our product. So this helps us um, be able to globally sell more, which is clear in our sales. And um, 
it helps us be more efficient so that we can continue to sell more. And um, when we look uh, back at our market share and our closing cash position and we combine those two worlds, we can see that um, we're able to pay off the debt and pay back or buy back our stock while issuing dividend, which gives us a high credit rating. We're a triple credit rating as far as bonds go. And so all these factors contribute into this uh, being the most efficient and productive company that we can possibly be, as you can see through our different rounds. And that is the end of this year. Welcome back to the Dignity's report. This is round eight, year eight. Um, as you can tell, there's very big numbers on the board. We went up quite a bit from our previous round seven. Um, as far as it goes, we jumped up around $110 million. We are at $450 million um, this year in sales, which is very, very good. We're almost half a billion. Um, as far as our net profit goes, I'm pretty sure it was around a $40 million jump. So right now we're at about $77 million. And that's very good, and we're hoping that we can continue this. And here comes Ryan with the closing cash position. So uh, a quarter of a million dollars and a in our closing cash position through end of round eight. As you can tell, we kind of have a uh, knockout here in the last round. If this were a fight, we would have won by knockout. Um, China over here, we uh, lost a little bit of the market share in China, but our USA market went up quite a bit and our Germany market is back up over 50%. And uh, hopefully you invest as much money as you could into our stock because we nearly doubled this year. So here's Caleb. So once again, our closing cash position had nothing to do with anything um, in our uh, like issuing stock or issuing debt because we didn't have to do any of that and we still had a larger closing cash position. Also, we continued to have large plant improvements and we still had this kind of cash position because of that top number, the sales. We had so much sales and we were still able to turn out that much profit as well. That's a lot of profit for one year. That's why you should be investing in us. If you look at our market shares, as Ryan mentioned, you can see the value in that. And our stock price nearly doubled, as Ryan mentioned. That's incredible. That continues our high rating of bond pricing, um, of the AAA. And it also, if you look on Investopedia, Robinhood, um, and many others, CNN, World News, they've listed us as a must buy because we continue to go up and up and up in our stock price. That's the publicity that we need for free. We don't even have to do anything except be good. And we get publicity all over news networks because people should be buying in us as a stock. Um, as we finish these years out, we finish with 31.9% of the global contribution margin. That's huge. So we started at 23 and we finished at 31. So we continue to get better, almost 32. And as we continue to get better, we're going to be able to provide better services and we are able to can, uh, provide a better product in the long run. As we continue to have a global impact, we'll be able to expand to more countries, make more money, and make more impact on the globe. This is a unique product because we don't just make money off of this product and have a lot of um, global impact as far as economics go, but we really make a difference in people's lives. And that's a huge reason why you should continue to impact or invest in us, excuse me, because the impact that we have on the people that use our product, it's a life-giving product, as well as what we do with our money. We invest a lot of our money back into our people. We invest in our employees and in our production facilities so that we can have the best work environment possible and make sure our employees are happy. And those are the reasons you should invest in us in this year as we finish up here. Feel that? Just went into the future. All right. What we plan on doing in the future? I'll tell you what. Continue to increase our global contribution margin. That's the key. We really need to focus on that. We need to make sure we keep it up high because we don't want it to slack. Next, we just want to maintain, not just maintain, but steadily increase our stock price. Our stock price is doing very well. We've increased it quite a bit over this past few rounds, and we hope to continue to increase it and um, maintain it. You know, 
and uh, right. In the future, we uh, want to make sure that we continue to make our employees the happiest and even happier than they are now in the market and the industry, maybe even just out of the entire world. Uh, yeah, make the environment better for the employees. It'll just, uh, everybody knows like from basic management classes that the happier your employees are, the better they treat the customers and the better the, the product will be and the more happier that they are at work. So, here's Kim. Did you hear that, Bill? That's us booming into the future as we continue to have a great success in our company. So when we reflect on how we started and our humble beginnings when we started in China, I think that was one of the best decisions we made because we were able to globally produce so much um, quickly, cheaply, and be able to transport it well. So uh, we continue to operate in every country um, and have, a, have two different products in each country and target both markets. We're able to target both markets because we have one product for the lower market and one product for the higher market. So this is awesome. This allows us to have the best global impact. And we have great employees. We have a great employee turnover. Um, we have great ratings for our stock. And we have um, great opportunities for our future. So these are what we want to do in the future. And you notice how a lot of that doesn't necessarily have to do with our profits, but it has to do with how we're giving back. Because that's the next segment that we realize we've taken out and we've forgotten about in our process of uh, success. So this is our end of the future, and we hope to continue to be a solid company that gives back to the community.